together for Jesus. tonight let's try that again how are you all tonight how was how was the devotion this morning guys it was good all right you know um the presence of the lord is in this place and we could sing you know i don't worship for the entire night but um excited for the for the remainder of the um, of the word right <laughs> so so we're not gonna we're not gonna waste any time at all but before we move forward I want you to you know turn to your neighbor and say and say neighbor you're looking good neighbor you are happen you are happen neighbor you are happen Hello, hello. You are up. Yeah. The up. You had to leave out the H. Up. I had to teach all the dialect, boy. That If that didn't put a smile on your neighbor face, try this one. Neighbor, if it wasn't for you. I'd be the most handsome. You know, it wasn't for you, neighbor, that'd be the most handsome guy in this room tonight. Or for the ladies, you know, if it wasn't for you, I'd be the most beautiful lady in this room tonight. But you're with me, neighbor, you're with me. I feel like you know you're in church like any presence of the Lord, but it's for joining us for the first uh, the speakers for these nights. And the speaker, the speaker comes in duality, right? The speaker comes in pairs. Right? So it's Apostle Dwayne and Josan Dyer. The senior leaders or restorers of the bridge ministry where they have served faithfully for the past nine years apostle Dwayne has been deeply involved in ministry from a young age guided by his father reverend manuel dyer at the zion hill ipa deliverance temple in bell garden a gifted worship leader and psalmist apostle Dwayne operates within his prophetic ministerial gifts and is passionate about transforming the lives of young people. Inspired by Psalms 1 verse 3, he believes in limitless possibilities for serving God. Apostle Duane's mission is to see souls saved and prepare for the return of the King. Unwavering in faith, as a lead vocalist and songwriter with Shakina Production, he uses his musical gifts to usher worship and witness lives transformed through the presence of God. Apostle Duane is also a proud father of four beautiful children. And, um, you know, five is the number. Right there, the Irish. <laughs> get an amen. Anyway, no amen at all. No support at all, but. <laughs> Apostle <laughs> Josan Abilidaya began her mutual journey at the age of 20 and has a strong passion for reaching the lost and nurturing young people. Before becoming an ordained pastor under, under the International Pentecostal Assembly, she served with the Youth for Christ organization for three years. Mentored by Pastor Frank 
M. Porter and the late Reuven Daniel. Apostle Josan is the president and founder of the Chalet Women's Ministry and has taught at Signal Hill Secondary and Mason Hall Secondary through the Life at the Crossroads program. She produced and hosts her television program, Seasons for Change, on the Tobago Inspir Inspirational Network and recently published her first book, Kairos. Additionally, she founded and hosts on the couch with Pastor J and is the founder and professor at the Restorers Ministerial School, where she trains junior ministers and leaders. Apostle Josan is also a certified and licensed John Maxwell speech and coach operating in the fivefold anointing. Together, Apostle Duane and Apostle Josan are dedicated to their ministry and family, leading with a vision to transform lives and prepare believers for the return of the King. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please put your hands together and welcome to the podium. Apostle Josan Dyer. God is good, amen. And all the time, amen. Come on, just lift your hands all over this place tonight. We are indeed in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes when there's no words, we can just hum a verse, hum a, a song, hum a, hum something, some syllables. The songwriter said, when the music fades, we got no more words we will just have a melody that will come out of us in this room hallelujah yeah hallelujah hallelujah we lift you up God oh we give you the highest praise in this room just to be in your presence holy spirit i desire to be just to be in your presence come on just talk to him for a moment feet bow. If you gotta make your way to the altar, kneel. Come and kneel. Oh, you're in this room. You're in this room, God. Oh.
still moments we get a glimpse of who God is. We have a glimpse of his presence. We have a glimpse of what he would shape and form himself to be in that moment. And in this moment, it's the lion and the lamb. And Father, Lord God, we surrender our lives to you. Father, let this word touch someone's life tonight. And may transform our island of Tobago. Father, do it with us. Start it with this place tonight. A revival that will spread throughout Tobago, Lord. Use your woman servant, Lord, as I submit and humble myself to your will and to your way. God, I surrender my life to you. Father, we thank you for doing it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. We greet the, the pastors of this house. No other person but Reverend Carell Boyce and his lovely wife, Minister Afia Boyce. Put your hands together for them and the leadership team. And those who are viewing via online that belongs to the entire body of the Nazarene community, we uh, want to give greetings out of the House of Restorers tonight, thanking the Lord for you all. Thank God for the opportunity that we can be in this place. And if you're a part of this church or you're a visitor, welcome tonight. And if you're a part of Restorers, welcome tonight. Amen. These three nights pass so quickly and so fast. This is why we have to put deeper nights for five nights, amen? Because I find like when you start to go deep, the time does just pass fast, but God is good. Next time, we wouldn't waste the first night. We now know absentism, because people will know, gosh boy, it's gonna pass quick. So I gotta be here from the first night, the second night, and the third night. Tonight, I just want to get into it. I want to read Joshua 10 with you, verse 12 to verse 14. And then I'll recap for those who were not here last night a little bit. But it says in Joshua chapter 10, reading from verse 12, On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Sun stand still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Ajalion. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Joshua. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There has never been a day like it before or since. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. You may be seated. So the fourth level tonight we're going to talk about is called the command level. So we have come through three levels last night. What were our three levels? I have no candies to give away. The permission level. The connecting level. I hear people say connection. The connecting level and the covenant level. So we talk about the permission level. It's the basic level every believer should be aware of, they should know how to pray, how to ask God for help, for something that they need. Then we came to the connecting level, it's the relationship level. And then we came to the covenant level where a sacrifice will speak for you. And let me just say this, you know, while I was standing there, the Lord keep pressing me. Even last night when I handed up the mic, he keep pressing me with a scripture and I don't know where you want to go with Luke chapter 7. Verse 36, um, that talked about the woman who came in the room and washed Jesus' feet with her tears and her hair and anointed his feet with oil. And the Lord said to me while worship was going on there, I sat and I went back into it. He said, Joe, this woman understood covenant. And those who were sitting around Jesus, even though they were entitled to be around Jesus, they did not understand covenant. 
So they were now asking, what is she doing with this oil? Come on, somebody. They said, what is she doing with this oil? Why is this woman wasting this thing here? Because it was a sacrifice she was making. Uh, and the Lord said, this woman understood covenant, Josiah. Uh, while we take away, she just broke the alabaster box and she was crying and she washed his feet uh, with uh, tears on her hair. He said, this was not tears in hair. This was a covenant that she was making. That because of what Jesus had delivered her from, uh, she wanted to be more than just someone that said, thank you, Jesus. Us. She wanted relationship. She wanted to give a sacrifice. And the Bible went on to say that those who were murmuring about, they started to say, does this man know who it is that is, you know, at his feet and touching his feet and stuff. But then Jesus said to him and said to them that were there, and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, see thou this woman, I enter into thy house and you gave me no water for my feet. But she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with hairs on her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, this is the, the good part you need to hear, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. What did this woman say? Nothing. But the covenant was so potent. The sacrifice was so potent. That here's what Jesus says. Thy sins are forgiven. Wow. Nowhere you read where she's saying, Master, have mercy on me. Nowhere you are seeing where she's saying, Lord, forgive me for I'm a sinner. Nowhere you have seen recorded where she's pleading for a second chance. She has just offered a covenant of sacrifice to give up the best perfume she's had, to break her finances, to deposit a seed, to anoint his feet with oil. And Jesus responds response is what gets me he says though her sins are many Woo. she is forgiven you see this makes me understand why Zacchaeus was saved the Bible tells us Zacchaeus runs ahead climbs one of the tallest tree looks down sees Jesus and Jesus says to Zacchaeus come today I dine at your house the Bible says he goes into Zacchaeus house and Zacchaeus gets a conviction to do something for Jesus uh, he gets a conviction to make a sacrifice come on somebody and the Bible says Zacchaeus tells Jesus Today I give back uh, everything I've taken from the poor. Uh, you see, today this money here, I'm giving it back. Here's what the Lord says. You see, this Zacchaeus, uh, from today forth, he is saved. What spoke for Zacchaeus? Was not Zacchaeus begging Jesus for forgiveness. Jesus knew he was a thief. Nowhere you would read where Zacchaeus says, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness before you come into my house. I need this. I need that. No. Zacchaeus moved to giving Jesus something that was sacrificial. And the covenant spoke and it did the same thing that happened to this woman. It freed him. Sometimes, don't miss it, the things we are trapped in just needs a sacrifice. Ooh. Sometimes the things we are delayed in just needs a sacrifice. Sometimes the things we are praying for just requires a sacrifice. But, pastor, church people don't like to make sacrifice. Let me tell you who does make sacrifice. Kingdom people, not church people. 
church people, it must match up to their timeline. It must fall within their budget. It must give them an extra. You must persuade them it will work in their favor. You must tell them they will end up at the better end. You must tell them how God will come true in the end for them. That's church people. Kingdom people, Lord, say the word. Lord, say the word. Many remain in poverty. Many remain with never having. Not because Jehovah is not the great provider. But we are not covenant keeping people. We don't know how to access the third dimension with covenant. We just want to be before God. Father, provide for me. That's your basic level. And here's what's going to happen. God's going to provide for you, but you're going to be hungry tomorrow again. Because the permission level will only feed you for the moment. Because you're going to ask God, I need food for today. But listen, there's a season coming. If you see people in the running over and the press down and the shaking together, they did something separately. They did something different. They did something kingdom. And here's the next prayer that attaches itself to that now. Envy and jealousy. When people cannot make covenants or they struggle to make covenants, they become envious of people who make covenants. Who you feel he is? What do you think you could do? No, the person is showing up. You don't make enough sacrifices. Listen, we don't have a problem making sacrifices. Just don't make nobody show us up. We don't make enough. The moment we feel inferior is the problem. All the time we were good. You were good just handing out a pamphlet by the door. But when somebody passed with a big truck and drunk you out, and you realize, hey, boys, I need a big truck too, yes, boy. I'm feeling dumb here just talking and, and, and nobody hearing me. You not realize you could do what? Better. I always tell people, you don't know the quality of service you are giving until somebody does better than you. And then you realize what you actually give to God is really nothing. You think it's plenty now because nobody has gone beyond that. But prayer takes us beyond that. And you must have conviction in your spirit when you are not giving God your best. I'm not saying you must, you will. So if you don't have relationship, you will have conviction. If you're not making sacrifices, you're going to have conviction. And then we're going to come to the command level tonight. And the Lord said to tell you, you don't get to this level till you've mastered the next three levels. The command level. Now here's the thing about the command level. The average believer bypasses the next three level and jumps into this level. This is what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, most believers will skip relationship. They will skip covenant and just start, I command everything. I command ever. I command this. I command that. He said, and ask them this question tonight. How much manifestation have you had from commanding? Because this level comes with mastery. It means that you would have succeeded in relationship. You would have see, succeeded in sacrifice. So now it's just say the word. What about Joshua? What did Joshua understand that made the sun stood still? What did Joshua understand that made God obey a man what did Joshua understand that said to the Lord he had to fight for Israel where in the Bible could a man literally move creation how is it possible that a man has the ability to move the things God put in place. 
It's called the command level. And while we dabble a little bit with some commanding here on the earth, I don't think we understand the command level. So we will say things like, I command this and I command that. And we have no manifestations really of what we command. Because this level is not exposed to children. It is exposed to masters. Oh my God. If you go to an army and you said, where is the commander? The commander is not someone who just joined the force. It's not some little child playing around. It's not somebody who you know if they're in the army or they're not in the army. It is somebody who is wearing a lot of badges. It is someone who have been through so much tours that they have been awarded ahead of their team. And the team trusts this person. That if they say, release the jets now, release the fire now. Now, deploy the bombs now the commander must be obeyed because where he sits is important I want to help you get to the command level tonight as I open up this teaching tonight I want you to understand that this dimension of prayer is the ability to control something the level that this operates on, it works by knowledge, it works by uh, knowing the word of God, it works by mastery of the word of God, it works by grasping the word of God, it works by comprehending the word of God, it works by understanding. Now if you're reading your word, what you're commanding? This level is tapped into by knowledge. If you don't know God, what are you commanding? And if you don't know that you cannot command angels, why are you commanding angels? And if you don't know the heavenly realm, what are you commanding in the heavenly realm? This realm is opened up in prayer to those who seek after the knowledge of God, the word of God, and can apply it in this realm. So we can talk all day, I command, I command, I command. Listen to me, if you don't even understand what you're commanding, you may have no manifestation. Because this realm tonight is opened up by the knowledge of God. What do you know that you can utilize in this realm? The word command in the dictionary means one who has gotten mastery. This is the, the English dictionary. It means that you cannot just command something because you desire to command. There must be a quality of understanding and test that should approve you to be able to command stuff. The word command in the Bible, in, in, in the English dictionary means one who has gotten understanding. Do we understand the God we serve when we pray? Do we understand the, the different dimensions we have? Earth, principalities, powers. Do we understand the, the third heaven as Paul wrote in the New Testament? Do we understand the dimensions we are in when we talk about commanding our morning and commanding our day? And you know, we hear these cliches, command your day! But if you don't know, the Bible says that there are arrows that fly by noonday. What are you commanding? Because a lot of times we only spend time in prayer Pulling people down. Rarely ever touching the spiritual realm. Lord, anyone who's seeking evil after me. And Lord, anyone who desires to calm me. And Lord, anyone, and right now anyone is anyone. And anyone still means humans. Up to now, we did not get spiritual. We are still carnal. 
Because if we got to fight with spiritual weapons, our prayers have to become spiritual. And when we can still be praying and seeing our neighbor's face and our sister's face and our brother's face and oh, this one and that one, no, you are still carnal. You have not tapped into the spiritual realm yet. And this is the reason why so much time, church, we pray, we pray, we pray, and we have little to no results. And you say, but God, I've been praying. But have you been praying amiss? Because a lot of times we are praying with humans in mind. When he says what? We wrestle not against flesh and blood so why are we praying for anyone Joshua was a man wasn't he no way in the Bible said he was a God he was a man and he commanded the moon it means that there is a dimension that men can speak to the waters men can speak to the wind men can speak to darkness men can speak to tornadoes oh come on somebody men can speak to tsunamis And we saw this in the New Testament. Jesus comes and he finds them on a boat and they're trembling because the wave is throwing them to and fro and they ran downstairs and said, Jesus, master. Note the words, master, the commander. We're going to die. Jesus comes upstairs and he says, oh, you faithless people. How long will I be with you? And the Bible said, watch what he did. He rebuked the wind. He commanded the wind, go, move, get out of here, go the next direction. The disciples are with Jesus and the Bible said they marvel what kind of man is this that can command the wind. Then yet Jesus dies and says, greater works. will you do because I go to the father but like John the Baptist one is coming Woo! that is going to give you dunamis power one that's going to come and live on the inside of you that everywhere you go and you go and you go and you go you're going to have good you're going to have miracles you're going to rebuke the wind you're going to rebuke the psalms the church isn't some soft, diluted kind of work that God left behind. The church is God's imagination that he built on the earth, that we will stand up and exercise authority, power, dominion. This is the level we command demons from. You do not command demons on permission level. Nobody walks up to a demon and a man and says, can you please come out? I'm asking you nicely. You're laughing serious thing. Nobody goes, that's the permission level. That's why babes in Christ struggle with these things. Nobody goes to a demon and says, knock, knock, who's in there? I'm seeking you. No, that's permission. That's for God. The fourth level is where demons must go. It's the command level where we won't only give in the authority to speak to the wind, but we can speak to spirits. And that's the level Jesus operated on on the earth that wooed man that when they saw him said, what manner of man is this? Jesus came walking in the command level. Where you just said, what is your name? Get out. I command you out. Unclean spirit, leave now. 
Infirmity leave now. Sickness leave now. Demons leave now. At no point did you ever hear Jesus plead or bargain with spirits. I want to say this now, church. We have been given the power of God to command these demonic spirits out of our churches, out of our families, out of our lives. But it will take a dimension of prayer that we must come into where we don't have to call the pastor again, or we don't have to call the elder again, where we can speak to the thing. You see, there is a myth that we believe that only pastors can do these things. Then are you saying pastors alone should be at the command level? There is a myth that tells people, hey, if you can cast two demons out, you have a deliverance ministry. Are you saying that Jesus wastes his time dying for everybody? When he came and he gave power, he never said, I give you power for deliverance ministry. I give you power to speak. We ought to see things out of order and pull it back in order. We've been given the authority to command things that are out of design and put it back in the design. This level is the level of the commander. You sit in a place where you can command the spiritual to align with the physical and the physical to align with the spiritual. So if there is a back pain that shouldn't be where it should be, you've been given the power to command the pain to leave the body because where you sit in prayer that dimension is open up to you I love to call this realm the superhero realm because that's the realm they saw Jesus walked on the earth. They saw him as a superhero all because he tapped in the ability mode where he commanded things, wind go, water park. He walked on the water, uh, demons go, uh, this go. That's the command level. Do you know that if he is in us uh, and that power in Christ uh, we were raised with, uh, that that's same power should be upon the church in this present age yes. Yes. what's our problem prayer Jesus. never mistake doing glamorous things for God as a prayer life never substitute I should rather say Doing great things for God and not mastering the prayer dimensions. Because the higher you go, if you have not learned to master those dimensions, there is principalities waiting to destroy you. And this level must have mastery. You must know the word. And I'm talking about you just quoting something you hear a pastor say. Well, Jesus, last week I hear Pastor Boy said that God will heal my body. No, at this point is not what Pastor Boy said. At this point is the word of God says, by his stripes, I am healed. I declare I am healed. Pain, you have to leave now. Now that's a command. The Bible tells us about a prophet named Elijah in 1 Kings 18.41 and the Bible says he has now done a whole showdown on Mount Carmel and uh, after this is done there is still no rain. And they say so when is the rain going to come and he says you know go prepare yourself Ahab rain come in. Watch this. <laughs> no rain ain't come in. There's a dimension Elijah teaches that he commands the rain. To come. Tell somebody, I'm stepping in this dimension. 
The Bible says in verse 41, then Elijah said to Ahab, go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. So Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bowed low to the ground, and prayed with his face between his knees. And then he said to his servant, go look towards the sea. I want you to notice here, what did he do to call the rain? A lot of what we are missing today is trapped in prayer. The Bible says, he goes, you see, the problem is we want to strike devils and strike demons and don't have a prayer life. We want to run up Jezebel chest and root out and pull down and mash up and cut down. And we don't have dimensions of prayer. The Bible says he goes into prayer. You would think someone who could call fire down. Come on, don't miss the thing, man. Who will call fire down to burn up an offering wet. Then have to go in prayer. Don't miss it, don't miss it. He could have just said, come on, rain, come. No, the Bible says he went into prayer. This is where his power came from. Don't miss it. It wasn't in the glamour of the fire. It wasn't in the glamour of him on Mount Carmel. It wasn't in him as a leader. It was in his prayer altars. So the moment he went back to the covenant, back to the place of power, the Bible says, now he tells his servant, go look out forward to the sea. The servant went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. What will make him keep telling him to go and look? Because why? If you've seen something before, If you've seen God before in this dimension, there's no doubt he will not show up again in this dimension. So the reason he kept sending him back is because he had evidence that God comes in this dimension. So he keeps sending him back. Oh, I'm not taking that no because God has given me the power to command the thing. Uh, go back again. Oh, I'm not taking that no. I'm believing in God because he has given me power to command the rain. Uh, no, I'm not taking that no because I believe that God has given me the power to command the rain. Uh, what about this man? He understood in prayer. That made him wait seven times till the cloud was formed. Oh God, tell somebody I just need to see a cloud. Then Elijah shouted. I love his excitement here now. Before he was trembling. Before he was, uh, he was trembling, he was sweating, you know. I've, every time he come back and say, hey, it's not no cloud yet. He might sweat him because he don't tell he have one eat. Rain coming. Third time, no rain. Oh, Jesus Christ. Lord, you can't shame me today. Woo. The Bible says that he said, to, he said, as soon as he saw the cloud, watch it. He ran. He tell them, hurry. Tell Ahab. Tell him, climb into your chariot. Go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. He get boastful. He get power. He feels strong. Because a cloud was forming. What took me in this was lower down. And soon the sky was black with clouds. Wow. It, has, it, it is as... As soon as he initiated it with the command, everything fell into alignment. Nowhere you saw where he had to go back and call the rain to fill the sky. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. He never had to go and say, Lord, form more, more clouds. The moment he saw the hand, he knew it happened. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus. He didn't need to see the whole sky. He just needed to see the hand. And he knew God answered. And that is what he wanted, for God to answer. Now here's what took me. And a heavy wind blew a ter terrific rainstorm. And he, Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. Have you ever read this before? And he tucked his cloak in his belt. Tell somebody, super Seon powers. We're talking about dimensions of prayer here. Don't miss it. We're talking dimensions of prayer. Yeah. Super Seon powers. You think them thing they're making up in them Chinese cartoon and them uh, man manga and all them things. Listen, they're taking that from the Bible, boy. Sonic and they're taking these things from the scripture. Here's what the Bible said. He tucked his cloak into his belt because he don't want to trip on the cloak. It's like Elijah understood. He was about to boot up like he understood. My God, something was coming on him. The Bible said he tucked the cloak in his belt and he ran ahead. Watch this. The man passed the chariot on foot. Don't miss it. He was on the mountain. He passes the chariot. And I love how God to show off in prayer. The Bible says, and Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. It means that Elijah came from behind. Jesus Christ. And he arrived in front waiting for Ahab. So long it take you to get here and I tell you rain coming. The realm of the supernatural. The realm where you command the elements to move that the presence of the Lord comes upon the man, gives him supernatural abilities. Don't miss this. We're so locked into the carnal realm that we don't exercise any supernatural power. I've read this story so much times in my, in my life in the Bible, and I never see this man with super saiyan powers before. It means that uh, the, the, the believer in the spiritual realm, when we tap into the prayer dimensions, uh, there is an ability that takes over the human body, uh, that what should be last becomes first. Uh, where we should be slow, we become fast. Uh, where we should miss it, we hit it. Uh, where we can't read, we begin to read. What we can't see, we begin to see. Uh, what we can't do, we can't do. Uh, and that's why Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. Uh, he was walking with the super was say on powers uh, where he was making dead things live again dead things move again but the problem is with us as I said before the church wants to skip relationship we want to skip covenant and we want to graduate to super Saiyan. So we go in and pray, Lord, give me that power like Elijah. Lord, give me that power like Elijah. But where is your covenant? The only reason his prayer life is boosting like this is because he has mastered the secret place. He have mastered. Listen to me. If believers start mastering the secret prayers, there wouldn't be enough people inside here to heal. Jesus. We 
go, we will finish our healing party and boy, oh God, oh, we've gone find people on the street now to heal that man. Everybody don't get healed inside here. Yeah. I just feel like I have real power and I know what to do with it. Let me just find people and heal now. Let me go and empty all the hospital now, man. But the problem is the church is stuck on one dimension of prayer. We're struggling, we're suffering. We're creating more problems than solutions. Because we don't desire relationship with God. We desire church, not relationship. And when we, when we get to relationship, we don't go enough in to sacrifice the desire covenant. So now it's more like, God, I'm good here. Don't ask me for too much. But then God is saying, if you would only master your covenant, I would take you to the command level. The level where you will speak a thing and see it come to pass. Watch this. The Bible tells us Jesus comes to a village where his good friend Lazarus is there. Again, the ability. Watch this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Verse 38 said, Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. And he said, take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been, tell somebody, Martha, get in the next dimension. Don't miss it, don't miss it. Martha was spiritual, but she was still on a carnal level. Jesus is in her presence, and she doesn't acknowledge what dimension he is on. So she's still trapped in the carnal. He's there, he's thinking, he's smelling. Get rid of people like that around you. That's a hard pill. Because some of you want miracles, but that's all your circle have in it. You see your condition? You're too old. You only have people in your circle telling you about your physical impediments. Why you going to adopt a child? All they see is your impediments. They don't have the dimension to speak a thing and see it come to pass. They see you in trouble. And all they can say, well, my God, this is sorrowful. Well, you speak a thing and change the thing and see it come to pass. Amen. Years ago, my husband used to say, we are not no kind of weak, imsy kind of Christians. Where we always crying and we always rolling and we always born, oh God, Jesus. What has he given us these dimensions for? And if you're a weak believer in the midst, then I draw strength and get some strength. Some of us are quarreling over foolishness. Some of us, we are leaving our, our marriages for foolishness. Some of us, we are leaving our churches for foolishness. I firmly believe if you have a deep prayer life, no offense could move you. The spirit of offense works best with people who have poor prayer lives. Because as Pastor Lee taught, they have no filtering system, which is the word of God. That when it comes, they can filter and say, that's of the devil, that's of the devil, that's of the devil, that's of the devil. I see your devil. I believe if we master our prayer life, our covenant, our reader, he said, what can remove me from the love of God? Yeah. Offended believers, most times if you check their prayer lives, they are not in the secret place. That is for you in here if you're someone who's always offended and somebody always hurting you. Time to get to the secret place. Uh, you're lacking prayer dimensions. Uh, it means that there is a level Satan still has the ability to touch you. Yes. Years ago, 
my, my pastor said this to me and it never left me. He said, if where you are now, you are still being attacked, it means there's a next level you must go to. If you're in this room and you're being attacked on the level you are at now, it's because God needed to go to the next level. Stop making excuses and get to the secret place. Watch this. I believe truly, you know, God has paid people to come for we, you know. Like pay them, like say, hey, 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 go and charge you up and run you out at that level. Come and say, hey, Lucifer, what are you doing today? I have one day like Job. Get him to the next level now. And he say, um, uh, you have a fence wrong here. I'm going to lift it. I, I fed up with she on this level. She nagging and only crying. Get she to the next level for me now. She praying for me to stop she enemies. But the only way to stop them is to expose her to you. So she go get up to the next level now. So when you think people set out against you, you're already demoting yourself consistently. Because God is trying to allow you to get promoted, but you so lack covenant and relationship, you can't now. You're on permission level only now. So every time you attack, all you can do is see people. Listen, you could be long in church and be an infant in the body of Christ. You could be leading a church and be an infant in the body of Christ. You could be leading choir and be an infant in the body of Christ. You could be preaching the best sermons and be an infant in your prayer life because you have not mastered the, that, those dimensions. All right, let pass the gist on course. My time is up. Oh God, don't tell me that. No kisses tonight. We are time. It's Friday night. We're going till midnight. <laughs> it's all night tonight. <laughs> Who had to catch the boat has to go from here tonight. <laughs> Want to take flight? Go straight from here tonight, amen. <laughs> he comes to Lazarus's grave, and note that I mentioned Jesus uses here. He does not use the permission level. He does not use the relationship level. He does not use the covenant level. He used the command level. What does he says? He says, "Lazarus, come forth." But don't miss this, don't miss this. I want you to understand the first thing Jesus did before he called Lazarus is he prayed. He prayed. He said, Father, I thank you that you have what? Heard me. God, Jesus. You think you're just calling Lazarus out of grave, Jesso? Jesus is acknowledging he prayed. He's acknowledging he went to the Father. He's acknowledging he's tapping into the dimension of prayer. He's tapping into covenant. He's tapping into relationship. Father. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he said, Lazarus, come out. This level must come to those who master relationship and you've mastered covenant that in one moment you don't have to go and walk up yourself. And you just said, Father, I thank you. Come out. Come forth. You look at these ministers, years gone by, there were some great ministers that passed through the earth, like Billy Graham and Derek Prince and D.L. Moody, and you can call names of great men that caused revival across the earth. Uh, T.B. Joshua and all these guys, I've never seen them work up a face to free people. 
Nowhere on the camera did you ever see them and the, 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 the rango and the tangoing and the tying up and the binding up. No how, they just come out because it's a command level. But you only get there when you've mastered the other levels before. You've got the relationship. Uh, Jesus, you know me and I know you. And then you got the covenant. Uh, I sacrifice my body for you. Lord, I lay it down. Uh, Father, I, re I reject food. I reject this. I reject that. Uh, God, I want to be a temple to be used by you. Uh, where is your sacrifice today? God wants us to go back into the command level. I'll tell you why. Because we are living in a time where people will start turning back to the church. And if all we have is the permission level, we can't help them and them can't help we. And they will come to us thinking we have help and realize we have no help and they will go back out. We are living in a time where the world, when they turn to the church, we must have the power of God. Amen. That we can speak the thing and we can, and when they come in and say, could you pray for that bomb not to go off? Could you pray for that coup not to pull off? And the church must say, yes! We've been given the power. We've got the dimension of prayer. We can command a thing and see it come to pass. Not I ain't sure now. Nah. Um, we go out to talk to NASA. We go out to talk to the military out there. See who can shoot down them thing in the sky. Oh God, Jesus. Let me pray. Let me pray. No, we have been given the command level. Tell somebody the fifth level is the authority level. People mix up this level with the command level. It's not the same level. The authority level is not the command level. You see, to have authority, according to the dictionary, is something different. Command means to command a thing. Authority means to command the thing, but also to change the thing. God, Jesus, help me here. Woo. Woo. Command says, I can command you to come, but I cannot change where you come from. Authority says, I can command the thing, and I can change the dynamics of the thing. God, Jesus, help me with this word tonight as I close. You see, the, the, the authority level, let's go to, my God, Ephesians 2, 5, says, even when we were dead in sin, we had been quickened together with Christ and he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in what? Heavenly places. Let me teach for a moment. This level is only occupied by position. This dimension of prayer is occupied by positioning. And you must know where you're positioned. And the position is in heavenly places. So this level is also called the throne dimension. Oh God, Jesus. Far above principalities and powers. Seated on the right hand of the Father, thrones. My God, if believers understand this dimension, uh, my God, the type of power we will possess and walk with on the earth, it is out of our minds. This is called the throne dimension. It is the dimension that Jesus sits in. Uh, and the Bible says and he has quickened us uh, and he has raised us up and he has made us to sit. This is the level the church sits at. This is a level I should say we should be seated at the authority dimension. And the Lord gave me the example of a police officer. He says, when a police officer, you see a police officer, they have the ability to do what? To give you a command. But they also have the ability to force the command 
And sometimes to enforce the command, they have to take what? Action. And they could also do what? Make decisions. And they could also what? Have jurisdiction. God, a little Mrs. Singer. All because of what? The police officer has a position. This dimension of prayer seats us in position to not just give a command but to enforce the command not just to enforce the command but to take the action not just to take the action but to make decisions not just to make decisions but to have jurisdiction God I must be too excited for this teaching I feel I'm talking to the wrong people Don't miss this one. Now you all remember the revelation of Peter when Jesus said, who am I? Matthew 16. He's saying, who do men say that I am? Note this, watch this. Mark the chapters I'm giving you. This is 16. He says to him, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my, and the gates of, shall not, against, and I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you shall bind, tell somebody authority. Whatsoever you shall lose. Are you ready for this dimension? This dimension is what God gives the church that is called diplomatic immunity. God, you move from realm to realm. You can rule on realms that doesn't even exist in your realm. You don't miss this, don't miss this. When he said, and I will build my ecclesia, he wasn't saying I will give it earthly jurisdiction, but I will give it diplomatic jurisdiction where you can stand in a position on the earth, but sit in a next realm above principalities. That when you speak on this dimension, you're going to move it in that dimension uh, because prayer is going to give you the ability to move between frequency uh, that demons cannot stop the church the gates of hell cannot stop the church we ain't know what God package us for he didn't package us to run from no demon demon is the lowest level of the things we should run from He didn't package us to run from no sickness. He didn't package us to run from poverty. He packaged us to deal with the thing. Tell somebody, speak to it. You have been given the keys. Now wait. Pastor, how do you know it's authority he's talking about here? Well, hold on. Let me go to the scriptures again. Now, I want you to underline in your Bible, verse 19, he says, I will give, means it is a thought. If I say to you, I will give you money candy, it doesn't mean you have money from me. Is that true? Come on, note the English language here in verse 19. He says, and I will give thee the keys. It means they have not gotten the keys. It means that they don't have the authority yet. It means they have not accessed this dimension yet. Let me go further. It means the church that he was prophesying to come will get the power, but not now. They don't have it yet. They can't command it like this yet. So he says, and I will. Because she has understood that he had to first die for it to come. So he says, I will give you these keys. I will give you diplomatic immunity. I'm going to give you this dimension. Now mark the next chapter I'm going to call. Now Matthew 28, 18. Jesus is already dead. And he's not resurrected. 
Now watch his language structure now. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on the earth has been what? Given to me. Woo! Woo! You see, uh, he couldn't give them what he didn't yet access. But now he's telling them in Matthew, all authority. Oh my God, a dimension is opened up to me now that what I'm about to give you, all authority. It's a dimension the church must understand we must tap into. After the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he declared that all authority has been given to him. And this authority says, does not have earthly jurisdiction, but it extends to the heavenlies. Now watch this, Matthew, uh, the, Mark 11 says now, for verily I say unto you, that whatsoever shall you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in those things which he has said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever you desire when you pray, this dimension only happens in prayer problem is we don't we don't pray long enough to get into this dimension we're like this so after we pray for 10 minutes uh, um, God um, I have to go and cook now yes Lord, I can't give you more than that. You know, sometimes you hear people marvel. They say, you know, I spent an hour in prayer. I spent two hours in prayer. I spent three hours in prayer. And sometimes I feel a little bit of anger in my spirit because I said, look at them single people. They are nothing to do. They are no children. They are nothing. They don't spend hours in prayer. No, you see, you, they don't understand what they're missing. Because you now, you're looking at your schedule so tight. You can barely breathe when the day come. You're fighting for 15 minutes to pray to God. Is a child calling you here and a child calling you there. And there are folks who have no kids and don't spend hours in prayer. How? Truth be told is, really and truly, we don't give God our best. We make excuses. And don't look at me like, oh, person, you don't know. Shush. When you require more from God, sacrifices in. Watch now. I see Trinidadians and Begonians. When they had to catch a flight to go to New York, they can't sleep. It's like they have itch. They backpack from two days, three days. Listen, the night before the flight, they can't even sleep properly. It's like whole minute they're turning and tossing like they had sugar on them. Listen, why? Sacrifice. They don't want to miss that flight. They're sleeping with the suitcase by the head. If they're late for the boat their whole life, they're, they're on time for that flight. You see, wheresoever we put our heart, our treasures will be there. Tonight I close. If you treasure prayer, your heart will be in prayer. If you see prayer as a treasure, you'll put your heart into it. But if you really never had an experience out of prayer, you will not put your whole heart into prayer. But if prayer is the place where you get answers, you will never second change your prayer life. The truth is, maybe 90% of Christians have no answered prayer. Jesus Christ. I will never downplay what works for me. 
if that works, you know why the man does go and spend all the money in lotto? And pick two? Because gambling have a way of making you feel you're winning. So every time you put in a little mark there, oh God, well, I ain't get it tossing, but I get a little 500, and I go play again. <laughs> You go on, you play a little game, you got a little 200, all right, me I get the 500, but I got a little 200, I'll keep going. And, and so they keep going and they're addicted. Why? Because the seen signs that the thing is working for them. If we say prayer works for us, how come we don't have desire? To pray. Because the truth is, Many of us don't have no results in prayer. We pray, but we are yet to see results. We're yet to see answered prayer. Let me go further. The reason why sometimes we have to get the prophet to always pray and pray and pray. It's not that we want the prophet to pray, now, but we have no answers in our own prayer. You know, we like to watch these people on the TV and boy, look how they're there. They're drinking shell talks. They're um, drinking. <laughs> they're drinking bleach. Some false prophet coming up with things to spray in their eye. <laughs> and you see them on the internet line up. And you're saying these people right in the mind. When people are searching for answers, they'll find themselves in the weirdest places. They'll find themselves in the lowest steps. You think when a man goes to the opium man, he doesn't know he's going to a low place for things. You don't think he know when he had to carry that bottle of punching and a boom. <laughs> Think, yeah, no, you can't get licks with a simple. <laughs> he carried the own broom for him to get licks. You ever see madness? <laughs> Spin the wrong till they get dizzy and fall. Right? You think you know they're going to some dark places, but they were answers. If the church become a place with answers again. The opium man go run out of business. The reason why he's still our business. Because we don't have enough answers. And to have answers, we had our dimensions of prayer. And we just want to come in church and born. Jesus, bless me in the going out. Bless me in my coming in. Bless me. Put a little oil here, Pastor, right here. Right here, Pastor. Just, just bless me right here, Pastor. Right here. This one is for the demon them. Bless me right here. And that is all we want from God. A little touch. Just bless me. Just bless me. All night prayer. Hmm. I walk all day. Hmm. I realize talk prayer and you see demon real show up in believers one time. All the time, hallelujah. State of emergency, we're going to lock down, we're going into deep prayer. Pastor, I just need to go home and come back. Pastor, I have a child waiting on me. Pastor, I just need to go and do this. Pastor, just give me a few hours, right? I come in again. Um, what them feel it is, yeah, they're holy and sanctified. Sleep, I want to sleep. I could pray from home. I'm going to watch it on it live. Call, Call a concert. Out. The truth is, I ask myself, does the church really want the power of God? Because he has hidden it. In this secret place. And this is why many will never tap into it. Because we are here for the grand opening of shows. And things that make us feel good. When the devil have us on a lasso. Whipping us, whipping us. Why? 
because we lack knowledge of these dimensions. We lack knowledge to command from these dimensions. That thing you see today, Moses said, you will see it no more. Tonight, what did you come in this room with? What problems you came in this room with? If you believe that these dimensions of prayer can solve them, stand up. I said, stand up. If you came in this room with a problem and you believe a dimension of prayer, one of these dimensions can solve them, stand up. If I go around this room now for those who are standing and I ask you, what are you willing to do for this dimension? Now that's the real question. Because while we're willing to withdraw, most times we are not willing to make the deposit. What are we willing to make for this dimension? See, I want to be healed, Lord. What dimension are you willing to sacrifice for? Lord, I want my house saved. What dimension do you need to get to? Lord, I need generational curses broken off my family's life. What dimension God is pressing you to step into? Lord, I'm before a Red Sea. Don't know where to go. I know I'm not going back. But I don't know my way through. What dimension is God asking you to step into? Because tonight there is a dimension for every one of us to grow into. If you're on the permission level, you can desire the relationship level tonight. If you've never had a relationship where you miss Jesus, if you don't pray to him, where you cry, when you feel he's far from you, that's a relationship level. Where you just sing love songs to him, that's a relationship level. And if you're on the relationship level, time to get to your covenant level. Where God can ask of you and you will be willing to lay down your life like Jesus Christ. And if you're at the covenant level, you can get to the command level. Where you master his word in your life and in your prayer chambers. You eat the scrolls, you eat his word and pray his word. And if you're at the command level, you can get to the authority level. The level where the keys of the kingdom is placed in your hands. And where you are seated at the right hand of the Father, which is God's desire for every believer in this room that we sit in the authority level. Not the basic level, not the begging level, not, oh, please, Jesus, do it for me. He wants you to command it from the authoritative level because that's what he died for. He didn't die for no demon to run amok in your house. Die so that you will have power to command it to live. first prayer I want to pray for tonight and we want to pray for is persons who have illness in their body I heard this from the Lord while I was sitting there tonight he said the first set of prayers I wanted to pray for is those who have illness in their body there is something with your body that is out of alignment uh, my God you have pain in your hands pain in your back pain in your feet I want you to come don't look to the left don't look to the right. It's not about anybody wooing you into anything. If you don't want to come, don't come.
you're saying, Lord, tonight it must go. Lord, tonight it must go. Come on, get to the next level. Get to the next level. You see, I could pray for you and you get to and you get the freedom, but what if it reoccurs? It has to become more than just being in church. It has to become that dimension you seek tonight. Come on. Open your mouth and just say, Lord, I desire. I desire you. I lay my life down for you. Make me a living sacrifice. Come on, pray, pray. Open up your mouth and 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 pray. Up your mouth and pray. Hallelujah. This is going to happen depending on what you say. This is going to happen depending on what you need. This is going to be happening on depending on what you say to the Lord. What are you going to say to the Lord? So you need to start to say, I command this pain to leave. I command this sickness to dry up. I command the arthritis to leave my body. I command this augmentation in my, my spine to come in alignment now. I command these headaches to go. I command hypertension to come to normality. I command diabetes to leave my body. I speak to everyone every cell, I speak to every region, I speak to every part of my body, I speak to my mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could you help me pray tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. Pain, pain, pain. Who has pain? Where's the pain now? Do you know what is causing the pain? Okay. So we're coming in agreement. In the name of Jesus, now go. In the name of Jesus, now go. In the name of Jesus, now go. We command this pain to leave now. She's going to get back up with no pain in the abdomen. Now, in the name of Jesus, we declare it done. 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 In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we command it to leave now. In Jesus' name. you all the time. Father, Lord God, we declare this pain in the back and this pain in the knee is going to leave tonight in the name of Jesus. We command it to leave in the name of Jesus. We declare now by the name of Jesus and the authority that you have given to us in this dimension, God, that pain has no place in her body. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we command it to go now Go now, go now in the name of Jesus. What couldn't you do before? Come on, bend down for me. Do it seven times. Seven times. Come on, get position. Get in position. Huh? One, 